give in exchange for that glass of water. He said, I'd give half of my kingdom. He said, well, you go ahead. You give me half your kingdom. I give you the water. You drink it. And after a while, you need to drain the intoxicants out of your body and urinate. But you're not able to do so because your urinal, urinal tracts are blocked for some reason. What would you give to release yourself of that pain of not being able to urinate? He said, I'd give half of my kingdom. He said, well, a kingdom that is only worth a glass of water and the ability to urinate. Why are you killing so many people? Why are you oppressing the nation in order to hold on to it? Very beautiful parable. So, a simple glass of water. Listen how you could shift your intentions and subtly turn drinking this very mundane daily act of satisfying your desire into something much more. You take it up, you say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Then, you bring it close to your mouth you drink the first sip. And then while you're still longing for even more water to quench your thirst, you take it, you push it out, you look at the water while you're still thirsty, and you say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alam, and you thank Allah. Then you bring it back to your mouth, and you take another sip, then you push it away the second time, and you say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Then you take it back to your mouth for the third time, take a third sip and say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. The hadith says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never punish this person in the fires of hell for that simple act. For saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen three times. That's how beautiful this religion of ours is. That's how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. That's all you got to do. Shift your intention. In fact, if you look at this faith, let me give you a, a, a few examples more and wrap up. You have... Such a huge plethora of religious denominations and, and philosophies out there. On the one end of the scale, you have a philosophy, the Buddhist philosophy, or some of those ancient Eastern philosophies, which say that there is a physical aspect to our lives and there is a metaphysical aspect to our lives. And for us to be able to reach the metaphysical aspect, for us, for us to be able to transcend the physical Barriers that separate us from reaching our potential, we need to block ourselves completely or deprive ourselves completely of the physical pleasures of this world. So what they do, some of them have gone to the extreme of gouging out their own eyes so that they wouldn't be distracted by the physical world. So they could see through that into the metaphysical world. That's what they do. Some men castrate themselves so that they have no more desires in this world, so that they could just focus, or so they claim, on the metaphysical aspects of their lives. I mean, this is at one, one end of the scale. On the other end of the scale, you've got the modern Western philosophies of satisfying our desires by any means possible. Any means. As long as your freedom does not infringe on mine, as long as I'm not hurting anybody else, I get to do whatever I want, no limits whatsoever, so that I could satisfy my desires and quench my thirst for material um, pleasures. So that's one extreme, and this is the other extreme. Now look at the beauty of the religion of Islam. It's right down the middle. If you had to draw a line between these two extremes, Islam would be right there. Islam would be that line. It says that the most mundane, the most involuntary, the most spontaneous, the most animalistic, instinctual acts of a human being are very well within the rights of any human being. They have to be controlled and all you have to do is shift the attention and the focus and basically, uh, as, as we said earlier, the intention so that they suddenly are converted into acts of worship. Let me give you two brief examples. I don't think anybody here thinks of the, and I'm sorry to talk about these issues, it's just to give you an insight uh, into the, the beautiful um, philosophy behind our faith. I don't think anybody thinks of uh, the act of excretion as their you know, dose of, of daily spirituality. And yet Musa in one narration says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ilahi, أَأَنْتَ بَعِيدٌ فَأُنَادِيكَ أَمْ أَنْتَ قَرِيبٌ فَأُنَادِيكَ 
Oh God, are you too far so that I need to cry out for you? Or are you so close that all I need is to whisper to you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ana jalisu man jahlasani. I am there for anyone who wants to converse with me. I can be intimate with anyone who wants to be intimate with me. All you got to do, as we said before, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to the forgiveness of our sins, all you want is a simple, small gesture. That's all you want. It may not be the best examples, but uh, in Islam, if a man divorced his wife, for him to go back to his wife um, within the prescribed period, he doesn't need to go back to court uh, and, and uh, I don't know, reverse the, the process of getting that divorce. All he's got to do is show his wife a simple gesture, such as, and the scholars say, wiping his hand on his wife's head. You know, all he has to do is to show her that um, he's sorry, because without saying sorry, she's never going to take him back. We know that for a fact. So, what, what we're asking here for, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all he's asking for is a small, simple gesture. That's all. So that he'd forgive our sins. So in this case, Allah says that I am there for anyone who wants to be intimate, intimate with me. I'm there for you. And then Allah says, Musa says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to him, but there are cases, there are instances where I just don't feel that I can mention your name. I exalt you above those places. One of them, he, he says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is when I'm in the state of Janabah, or in the process of reaching the state of Janabah, and the other is when I am in the process of excretion, I'm in the toilet. It's just, I mean, think about it. It's not the place to mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet, look at our traditions. They say that when you walk into a toilet, say, Bismillah wa billah. In the name of God and by the name of God. By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, it just somehow it doesn't feel right, does it? And yet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I want you to mention my name wherever you are. And that act from which you exult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes an act of worship. And the other example, the state of Janaba, what, what is, do you think, what is the most basic, instinctual, um, animalistic human tendency? Sexual desires, I think, definitely fit that description. And yet, look at the religion of Islam. It tells us that if one has already been to Hajj and wants to go there the second time, what is Hajj? I mean, those of you who have not been to Hajj, you don't know what I'm talking about, honestly. You don't know what you're missing out on. Hajj is, a, is, a, is the deepest journey of spirituality, self-discovery, and worship. It, it's unbelievable. So when it comes to spirituality, there's nothing like the pilgrimage to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet, the tradition states that if you've been to Hajj already, you've completed your compulsory pilgrimage, you want to go the, next, the second time, to take that money and the expenses that you are going to spend in your second pilgrimage and to spend it to facilitate the marriage of a young couple, you will be rewarded much more than for you to go to Hajj. The rewards of facilitating the marriage. What is marriage? Marriage is that. I mean, people get married for what reason? It's not like, you know, a man goes up to his um, uh, a future, you know, prospective spouse and, and gets on one knee and holds up the ring and says, honey, um, I've thought about this a lot and I've looked at the statistics and, um, uh, and I think that the human race is sort of diminishing, especially in the Western world. I mean, in places like Australia and Italy, you've got negative population growth and every woman only gives birth to 2.1 children and we've got more people dying. And therefore, as an act of humanity, we would, we need to continue the human race and, and sustain the civilization. Therefore, would you marry me? I think he'd, he'd be getting a slap on the face. That's what he's getting. So people get married for what reason? That act which is by far the most animalistic, if I could use that term. Animalistic as in, it, you know, it's something that's shared by, by most animals. That particular act becomes an act of worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you for it. And says, mention my name, remember my name. During the act, during the act of intimacy. Remember my name, say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Recite the, the remembrance of the Prophet in his holy household. It's amazing, it's mind-boggling. And suddenly it becomes... Something for which you are rewarded abundantly. Because, I mean, let's, let's, let's face it. Desires 
And these so-called instinctual animalistic human tendencies, they're not all bad. In fact, without them, life wouldn't be...